Hey, what's up, everyone? Michael Crump here yet again, talking about different types of consoles, usually each and every video. Today, I want to talk about a PlayStation 2 that I purchased that had a problem with it, and the problem was that it could not read DVD. So you may be thinking to yourself, well, you know, I'm sure you just opened it up and fixed it. Actually, I took a different route. Let's go see what that looks like. Okay, here is the slim PlayStation 2 that I bought a little over, I think about a month and a half ago. As you can see here, the PlayStation 2 slim was actually in very, very good condition. There was maybe a few little tiny dings on the top of the console, but other than that, there was really nothing visibly uh, wrong with the console. Over here on the back, uh, where you see this warranty seal and you see it's kind of been opened, that is because I did it. Uh, the warranty seal was completely intact, so I know that this console was more than likely not tampered with before I got it. This is one of my favorite consoles for a number of reasons, um, obviously for the size of it, but I really kind of liked this top loading tray here to put in your DVD or your CD disc. I thought the design of it was pretty cool. I feel like the materials is also very sturdy. Uh, it does not feel like cheap plastic. So I had a couple of options that I could do here. I could either go to eBay and I could look for one of these replacement uh, drives. And for the most part, I would be paying right around $43 uh, for it, maybe a little bit more. Well, so the price that I paid for that console was actually only $20. So what does that mean? I've got a $20 PlayStation 2 Slim and I would love for it to be able to run my Grand Theft Auto 3 and some of my other games, but I'm not sure I want to spend $43 plus. And some of that is in regards to adding shipping. Here is my copy of Grand Theft Auto 3 that is just begging to be played. This is absolutely one of the best games for the PlayStation 2 and it still looks and plays super well today. So I had a choice here, either get the DVD replacement drive or look for an alternative. You can only guess what I did. So right here, I'm back on eBay again. This time I am just simply typing in free McBoot uh, PS2. And this is a very powerful memory card in that you don't need to do any sort of hard mod to your PlayStation 2 in order to play game backups. This is a application that will allow you to run different ELF files and much, much more, including a tool that's called OPN, which we'll look at very shortly. And now you can make one of these free McBoot memory cards yourself. The only thing that's going to be needed there is going to be an already hacked PlayStation 2 in order to create it uh, yourself. In my opinion, it was just a lot easier to go out to eBay, find someone that's already put it on a memory card, and I needed to upgrade my memory card anyway. You know, most of the PlayStation 2s are running around 8 megabytes. These cards, most of them are right around in the 64 megabyte range, which is what I wanted to pick up. So you can see that there is a couple of different prices here. See some for 17, some for six, uh, 14, 16, 13, and a couple of other uh, prices there. So what I obviously decided was to go with the free Meek Boot card and pay the 15 to $20 that it costs to get one. Now keep in mind, I already had a USB hard disk that wasn't in use, I wasn't using it anywhere else. So that also kind of trimmed down on the total cost here. Because the goal at the end of all of this is to make sure that our Grand Theft Auto can play from whatever means. I went ahead and I grabbed a free McBoot uh, memory card from eBay for about the 20 bucks. And then obviously I already had an additional USB hard disk that I wasn't using. 
So here it is, it's also 64 megabytes. I'm gonna be able to store some more game saves on it. Hey, Michael here. Just a quick reminder to please subscribe to the channel. Maybe hit that like button and drop me a comment down in there. All right, back to the action. And I'm just using a Western Digital My Passport Ultra Drive if you are wondering about compatibility. So what's left to do here? Well, insert the free McBoot card into memory slot number one, and then plug in a hard disk drive loaded with any types of ISO files to your USB drive on the PlayStation 2. And really that's it. That's what you need in order to play a game back up on a unmodded PlayStation 2. Now, I know you're probably asking by now, so what would happen if that PS3 game that you have, which was GTA 3, you didn't have a disk drive or some other way to rip it? And well, in my opinion, if I already own the disk, then I see absolutely nothing wrong with using your favorite search engine and downloading that ISO image. Some may struggle with this, but I unapologetically don't. Okay, and then switching back over to my PlayStation 2 console, I simply inserted the memory card as shown earlier, connected my USB drive, and now I've hit play on my PlayStation 2. So it has a couple of the standard menus which you normally get, um, such as browser to browse for your memory card for save games. There's system configuration, which has a couple of options in there for different types of video settings, etc. You can see here there's a couple of different applications that's typically already loaded on this. So you can see things like code break for cheating. There is um, other applications that maybe tell information about the hard disk. Uh, SNES station is absolutely one of many where you can do uh, SNES emulation. I'm going to select this free McBoot configurator. And from here, you can select which buttons or layout that you like. I typically like to press the X on this screen. And then you're going to see a bunch of different types of settings in here. So these are all settings that you may need to get familiar with, especially as you may run into issues with free McBoot. Okay, and so here is the browser showing the memory card. You can see up there at the top, 50 megabytes free. So that all looks very good. But the application while we're all here is probably for this one called OPL. So this application is going to allow you to run your backup game off of your USB drive. So here you can see I've already got a couple of games loaded here. Okay, so let's jump into game settings. We're gonna just take settings. And down here at the bottom, this is where I changed my USB device start mode to auto. I also turned off the HDD device start mode as well as the ETH device start mode. And yes, you can play your PlayStation 2 games via Ethernet if you would really like to. Um, and then I put the default menu here as being USB games. Now, this is just depending on what you would like for your system. This is just my choice. And an important step after that is to come back in here and click on the save changes. I can't tell you how many times I actually went in, made configuration changes, and forgot to come back and hit the save changes button. And one more thing you may want to do is you may want to go into your display settings option. So down at the bottom, you'll see there is a video mode as well as a widescreen. So for video mode, I've turned mine to auto. And then for widescreen, I've turned mine on. Obviously, it's depending what your preference is there. That's just mine. So once that's all said and done, you can hit the circle button. And now you can select your game. And if you do not see your USB games, there is always that button down there called select, which allows you to refresh it. I may do another video on troubleshooting if you all want it. And there it is, Grand Theft Auto 3 in all of its glory. Well, I want to thank you so very much for spending some time with me here today. I would greatly appreciate it if you liked the video. And also, if you leave me a comment down below, I want to hear from each and every one of you. I greatly appreciate your time. 
uh, for watching this video, and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.